Now I'm going to show you just how bogus it actually is. Let's go. The first thing they did was that they tried to reconstruct temperatures from the period before we had thermometers by cutting trees down, old trees, and counting the tree rings back from today and then seeing which ones were wider than others because they thought that wider tree rings meant warmer weather. Trouble is, of course, that if you get a lot of rain, you'll get a wider tree ring. If you get more CO2 in the air, you'll get a wider tree ring. It's not a very reliable way of doing it, which is why the UN's climate panel itself had said, don't do it that way. But no, they did. And then they took different trees, several hundred of them, and all the trees that gave them that long shank and then the uptick at the far end, which is what they wanted to do, because they wanted, remember, to abolish the medieval warm period, they gave those 390 times as much weighting in the program that calculated that final graph. Then they did the one at the bottom here, from Maybury Slough in California, actually, which uh, shows no particular trend at all. Nothing surprising happening in the 20th century. So that was the first trick. Watch what else they did. Even if you put random red noise, a particular kind of random data, into the computer program they used to draw the graph, 99 times out of 100, it would draw hockey sticks. No change for 1,200 years and then a huge uptick in the 20th century. The computer algorithm was bent to give them a graph of the shape that they wanted so that they could abolish the medieval warm period. Then, this is a really crafty one, they found that if they took out just 20 of the trees that they had used out of the hundreds of trees to compile this graph along with various other ways of establishing pre-instrumental temperatures, then the trouble was the medieval warm period reappeared. There's the line they published in grey, rather faintly there at the bottom, Mann, Bradley and Hughes, MBH, and here is the line that they got when they took out just 20 of those records and all the other records combined, even with the dodge in the computer program, even though they chose only the Northern Hemisphere, all the other dodges still in place, the medieval warm period kept on reappearing. And we know that they did this because they archived those 20 in a separate file called censored data. <laughs> so they knew that their result depended on 20 anomalous records. Did they say that in the papers they wrote up in Nature on the basis of which the IPCC's graph was drawn? No, they did not. Now, it's not for me to say that this is a fraud, a criminal fraud. <laughs> Hell, yes it is for me to say that. <laughs> Next slide. But that's not all they did. It gets worse, believe it or not. Here is one of the Climate Gate emails, the thousands of emails between the few dozen bent scientists who are largely responsible for manufacturing and then magnifying the global warming scare. And here from Professor Jones at East Anglia, one of the creepiest science, uh, scientists I've ever had the misfortune to meet, is an email uh, to the authors of the original hockey stick graph saying, I've just completed Mike's nature trick. Now Mike is Michael Mann, he's the guy who invented this bogus hockey stick of adding in the real temps, etc., a lot of mumbo jumbo, um, to hide the decline. Now I'm going to show you what hide the decline means, because this is the clue to just how far these people are willing to go to make sure that legislators and bureaucrats worldwide are co so confused about the science that they spend trillions of your money on completely wasteful projects to make global warming go away when it's not likely to happen in the first place. Here's what they did. Now you'll see here the red, yellow and green datas, uh, sorry that should be blue, yellow and, and, and red, blue, green and red, I'll try and get this right, um, data are from three different scientists, Keith Briffer, uh, that's Jones from East Anglia and Michael Mann who was then at the University of Virginia, now at Penn State. And the actual temperatures for the 20th century are shown in black there on a highly exaggerated vertical scale to make it look all much more terrifying than it actually is. Now the important thing to notice here is the green one from Keith Briffer, which was a few trees from the polar Urals, if I remember rightly. And you will see where the uh, arrow is pointing at the right-hand end of the screen there. And you'll see that the, the data line has plummeted from 1960 to about 1985. And yet the temperature, actually as measured, is going up. 
And so what we're getting there is that the tree rings were predicting that there would be a huge decline in temperatures from 1960, but the thermometers were telling us that there wasn't a huge decline, there was something of an increase since 1960. And that was the decline that they wanted to hide. They wanted to hide the fact that tree rings are no good for telling us about past temperatures, because you get these huge inaccuracies. Shall we see how they did it? Okay. Here is a document by the World Meteorological Organization, one of the two parent organizations of the IPCC. And there you will see that far from these three data sets, one of them coming down and two of them going horizontal, which we've just seen, they're all three taken right up to the top where the green arrow is up at the top. Now the data don't do that, but the graph purporting to show that data, you can see the three things, they're all labeled there, so we know where they got them from. We know it's the same data. They just decided that was the message they wanted to show and they were going to bend the evidence to fit their conclusion that tree rings were a good way of abolishing the medieval warm period. Let's just show that uh, side by side, the actual data and then what the World Meteorological Organization did to it. And if you take Dr. Briffer's green graph once again, look at the enormous difference indicated by the green arrow there between where the green graph should have ended and where it does end on the World Meteorological Organization's rewrite. And I can see several jaws dropping as far as the floor on this. And so you should be outraged at what is going on here. On we go. Because the, all of this doesn't establish that there was a medieval warm period. The fact that their graphs showing there wasn't are bogus and based on a technique that can't tell us there was a medieval warm period or not because the tree rings are not reliable. The scientists had very honestly said when will a man-made effect on climate change be identified? It is not surprising the best answer to this question is we do not know. Now that's honest, isn't it? They're admitting they don't know. And you might say why am I complaining about that? Well, I'm not complaining about what the scientists submitted. I'm complaining about what the bureaucrats published. That's what came out. The body of evidence now points to a discernible human influence on global climate. Five times the report as submitted by the scientists had said, no, we can't tell whether there's any human influence and we don't know when there will be. That was what they'd said. But this is what was printed, because one man rewrote that report at the behest of the bureaucrats, because the bureaucrats were saying to themselves, if we go on producing reports saying there's no human influence on climate, how long are they going to go on paying us to go round to destinations where grass skirts are the norm, so that we can have holidays in the name of saving the planet from global warming? <laughs>